welcome back. So, another one of our autumn or fall collection. And look at these moulds. A bit sort of art deco in shape, you know, with the archways. And we're also going to try and use this hydroponic vase mould. Now, I will say, spoiler alert, we don't have the test tubes for the vase, unfortunately. But we're also going to use these gorgeous pounders, which you may have seen us use or use a variation of in previous video. Uh, if you've seen the acorn pots, perhaps. So here we are with the first one of these beautiful art-shaped coaster moulds. Um, they're, I'd say they're probably one and a half, maybe twice the size of a regular coaster. Very unusual shape. Really, really like them. Going to apply, or do my best, to apply the mica powders using a dry bristled paint brush into those grooves. Now, with hindsight, so this is editor Laura talking now, or should I say voiceover Laura, sorry, not editor Laura, voiceover Laura talking saying, yeah, in future this is not how I would do this because we do get mica powder bleeding into the next section which in this particular instance isn't what we want but here is an extreme close-up of the mica powder going on now first time of using these molds again they're from one of our Timu haul that we did recently it wasn't a sponsored one um, at all we just decided why not Let's have a little splurge. <laughs> so we did. And you know what it's like if you've been on the Timu app or website. Very easy to fall down a rabbit hole. And before you know it, you've ordered rather a lot. Um, all very reasonably priced, mind you. But you, uh, yeah, we find we've ordered like a sack full of stuff usually. Um, always fun when it comes through to you though. And it arrives and you think, oh, it's like Christmas. Anyway. <laughs> get all excited opening it so that is that first color which i believe was the copper gorgeous really stunning the way it's hitting the light now we're going in for chameleon green now this is gold but in certain lights you'll see what i mean you get like a green metallic sort of tinge to it there's a little hint of it there. Now, yeah, in future, I think I'm just going to blend them all. So I would blend the copper into the green and then the green into the next colour and then the next colour into the next colour and so on. I, I don't think I'd leave the gaps that I left. Um, yeah. That's the only thing I would say. I mean, don't get me wrong, they did turn out very nicely indeed. Um, but there was a bit of bleed in the mica into the paler colour of the resin that we used. Um, so although we were pleased with the results, we were about 98% pleased, if you get what I mean. And we are a little bit perfectionist so I don't know I don't know if we'll sell these or if we'll keep these I'm really not sure now I went for the gold I thought well, I'm gonna go for the gold glow but actually I went for the metallic gold and as I've said before you know me in this metallic gold powder mica powder it's just yeah I left it alone for a little while everyone now it's back <laughs> now it's back my name is Laura from Lotty Jasmine Designs and I'm a little bit addicted to metallic gold mica powder. Anyway, um, as I said before, and we say in most videos, make sure that you wear PPE. Now, by that, when you're working with resin and mica powders, we mean gloves. As you can see me, I'm wearing these purple nitrile gloves. Uh, you can get them from anywhere. I mean, these are particular ones are from Amazon. There won't be a link because they're easy enough to find gloves. And obviously you need to get what suits you. Um, also wear a respirator mask. Work in a well-ventilated room. And make sure that you are protecting your clothing and, and your arms, if you've got bare arms. Wear a long sleeve top. You must make sure that you're completely covered. So that's it. Gloves, old clothes, and a respirator mask. Oh, yes, and well-ventilated room. Anyway, moving on. 
all the other things that we use in this video will be listed in the description box down below. Now this video is a little bit longer than our usual ones. We usually average around sort of 15 minutes. This one does go on for nearly 22 minutes everyone. So I hope you've got yourself a nice drink of whatever your favourite drink is and you're sitting back and relaxing and enjoying this video. So as you can see here we've got the copper on the outside, we've got the chameleon green which is a green gold, then we've got metallic gold and then we've got the white with the golden glow. Now look at that, you can see it better from the other side. If only it had been as crisp as that in the finished article, but it doesn't matter. So what I've done here, there is residue of mica powder. So I turned the mould over and gave it a damn good tap. That just shakes off any excess mica powder. And I did try, I did clean up the mould really, really well. Well, at least I thought I did. Um, I also, as you can see, went in with the copper mica powder again which you can see me doing this on the other one there we are look I love them almost look a little bit like stained wind uh, stained glass windows that you might see in churches and cathedrals hmm I quite like I like those very much I do like these actually I wasn't sure you know have you ever done that you've made something you think oh, I don't know if I like that or not I don't know if I like that anyway tap it turning them over giving them both a damn good tap there we go. Now, I wasn't too sure what to do about the middle because you've got a middle section as well. I'm just going to try. Now, this is me doing a bit of the clean up job. I did clean more of it off camera. I promise I did. Um, but again, didn't quite clean enough. <laughs> and the mica powder that was in there wasn't, the edge wasn't a clean, crisp edge, which is a shame. Which is when I think, you know, Laura, you really should have just blended the colours into each other. Um, which, you know, in future, if I do this particular colour palette again in this mould, in this design, I will. Well, at least I'll try and remember to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love these. I think they look absolutely gorgeous. I have seen people doing them in all colours of the rainbow. Um, which again is beautiful, looks absolutely beautiful. In case you're wondering what I'm using to clean this up, all I've got here is just a regular wet wipe that you can buy. Um, we tend to buy packs of baby wet wipes, um, but you can um, use some kitchen roll if you would prefer to use that. Spritz it with some isopropyl alcohol and just clean up those areas that you want cleaned up. Um, as I say, I then cleaned up the second mould as well and this was them. So I thought, oh yes, they're done. Lovely. As you can see, the middle bit, I decided in the end to go with the um, chameleon gold just down the middle. Or the chameleon green gold just down the middle of those. So that was those done. Love them. Absolutely love them. Now, this is a hydroponic vase mould. It comes with one of these little round... Let's call it just a tube. And what you do is there's a, there's a section in the top of the mould there or wherever on your mould <clears throat> and you need to just tuck this in. It needs to create um, a piece that's sectioned off so the resin can't get in there because that's the bit when it's cured and you take it out, that will be the bit where the test tube part of the vase sits in. So it goes through and sits in. Now... The question was, what do I do? Do I mix up different colours of resin? Do I put them in and through? Um, will this ever look right? Um, <laughs> hopefully. I just, I don't really know what to do. And then I, then it came to me, do you know what? Oh, I think I'm just going to go for it. So I decided to try and do a bit of an ombre thing again with this mould. So, you know, not sure how this is going to work out. But just kept everything crossed, all fingers crossed at this point. And we were going to go for it. Now, as you can see, I've started with that beautiful, rich, autumnal copper colour going at the top. So that's the first bit. Then we're going in with chameleon green gold, or the chameleon green, which just looks gold with a hint of green sparkle to me. And then we're going in with the metallic gold at the bottom. There we are. I did do this on a time lapse, so um, that's why it's like this. And then at the very bottom, we did the glow white. Bit of a clean up, and then there you go. So look at that. That looks 
beautiful. Look at the sheen. Did you see the bit of the green there? Now in future, I think what I'll do is I won't bother with the glow white at the bottom. I'll just continue on with metallic gold. But yeah, made up some tea expert resin, one to one mixing ratio, stirred it for five minutes minutes to make sure it's thoroughly mixed and combined then I let it sit for about three to four minutes so most of the larger air bubbles were gone um, now I did decant it some of it into a smaller mixing cup because you know if you mix up large uh, volumes of resin and leave it all in one cup it can get hot very quickly or get warm very quickly and if it does that it will flash cure and that you do not want now in this i'm going to add some golden glow mica powder rather a lot actually there yep generously adding it it's mixing it in stirring it in now this is me stirring in real time um i haven't sped this up so i was really going for it <laughs> Making sure I'm scraping around the edges of the mixing cup, trying to incorporate all of it in. Look at that. So can you see how that's changing colour? Can you see the golden glow effect there? Hopefully you can. There we go. You've got a flash of it there. Hopefully the camera's picking it up and you can see it. Or you can see what I mean. Look at that. Love this. Love this particular colour just gives that bit of warmth to it look at that beautiful right i wasn't satisfied with it though i don't know why i just didn't leave it but anyway in for a penny in for a pound as they say so i'm using um some of this lovely white pigment paste or it's a paste it's liquid really very thick thick liquid from let's resin everything as i said before i think i've said before in this video we will have used will be linked in the description box down below so i decided to add that in because it wasn't quite opaque this is going to sound odd but it wasn't quite a solid enough white color for me and i realize that sounds odd but yeah and now i'm looking at that thinking Where's the white golden glow mica powder gone? Do I now need to add some more of that? You know, it's still in there. It's just about still in there. I can't remember if I added any more or not to this. No, it doesn't look like I did. Right, okay. So we've decided to go first to fill up one of the arch-shaped arch -shaped window moulds. Let's call them that. Oh dear. So, yep, here we go. I've decided to pour it that way on. That's just so that you can see more of it. I can get more of it in shot there. So yeah, just a steady stream. Obviously, you can pour it slower than what I do. If you don't feel very confident, then just pour it slowly, but try and do it in a continual stream. Uh, there we go. So you don't introduce too many bubbles. And there you can see it's just gradually filling up. There we are. We'll just fill it up to the top and then we're going to move it out of the way and fill up the other one. That actually took more resin than I was expecting it to take. But uh, yeah, here we go. Almost completely full. Moved it to one side and filled up the other one. Then here we go. We're going to fill up this one. Now I didn't realise... This is the hydroponic vase. I didn't realise that there was an area there that wasn't covered in mica powder, but never mind. As you can see, I'm pouring from one end, but it's tending to fill up a bit quick and it's not spreading down the in through the mould quick enough. So stopped for a bit Ooh. and just let it move, let it spread, let it disperse out through the mould and along it and then filled it up with a bit more. And a bit more. There we are. It's just went to the other end of the mould now. And we've just filled it up from this end. Whoop. Nearly spilled over the mould there. <laughs> Nearly. See, it's still going down. Where that, let's call it a bung. 
little mini tube thing is that I put in. It's still making its way down and underneath where that is. But I'm just really hoping at this point that there aren't lots and lots of air bubbles in any of these, and particularly up around where that um, bung is that I had to put in. But here we go, a day later. Yes, I did wait a day. Um, those of you who know us know that I'm quite impatient when it comes to demold, but here we go. First one of the arches, cured nicely. Nice and cleanly off the mold, which suggests the mica powder is on it. Here we go, look at that warm copper. Stunning, beautiful. Oh, and the bottom, mm. yeah. And it was at this point I could see, oh gosh, look, yeah, we've got a bleed of some mica powder there. Yeah, which is a real shame. I mean, I could go in between those grooves. I could put some tape along the bottom of the mould uh, to, to sort of section it off and I could pour in between those lines if I really wanted to, but I left them. I might go along the very bottom of the mould though, along that flat edge with um, some of the rose gold chrome uh, um, sort of paint pen that we've got. But yeah, we've got the same thing on this one. Can you see where the mica powder's just bled into that white resin? So yeah, in future, I think what I'll do is um, try and create more of an ombre look rather than this graduated look with the white but I'm quite pleased with those I mean even if we keep those for ourselves rather than trying to sell them or put them on our website um, I'm really quite pleased with those I love the design I love the look I think I'll probably change the color palette uh, for sure and um, maybe try it with some clear resin that is dyed different colors with you know alcohol inks so this is the hydroponic vase and I can already see we've got the vase has gone a bit of an odd shape at the top. Um, yeah, so this one won't be going up for sale, but it's still nice. It's still nice to see it. And obviously this is the first time we've used this mould. It's the first time um, I've made this particular shape of mould. I've done hydroponic vases before. Mm, mixed sort of success with them. Wasn't overly happy, uh, but... You know, uh, this is a learning process for us as well. And these videos are meant to try. We, we like, we hope that what we do, by watching what we do, you can learn from our mistakes, but also that they give you a bit of inspiration on how to do something yourself. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got some, oh, we've got a bit of tidy up to do on the inside. We need to go around the edges with the deburring tool just to make sure there's no sharpness anywhere. And yes, yeah, so normally what you do is around the, in the round little hole at the top there, you then put in your plastic or your glass test tube vase part. And that's the bit then when you would put your um, lucky bamboo or your um, dried flowers or your single stem rose you know whatever you want to do we've got a couple of little marks as well for some reason so we do need to just check the mold and make sure the molds okay and that there are no little marks anywhere within it but look I love that sort of ombre effect yeah there we go so yeah, we think we just got a bit of an uneven mould, I think, there. But here's the deburring tool, and I thought I'd show you what I'd do. So we just drag it along, gently but caref but firmly, the edges there. It just takes that little bit of sharpness off, so you don't end up hurting yourself. There we go, because as we all know, resin can be quite sharp on the edges, if it's just, you know, cured and so on. So obviously we don't want anybody to cut themselves. So we're just doing that there and it creates these little curly, curly whirly bits. There we are. I've actually just had a quick glance at the time and realized I haven't got much longer to do these voiceovers for. Uh, so just a little um, sneak peek, a little hint. Um, myself and Wayne are joining a lovely lady called Jules. Uh, Julia uh, from, or Jules I should call her, from Resin Jules. If you haven't seen her, go over to her Instagram page. Um, she is fabulous, a very, very talented artist 
and teacher. We are having a private, with a few other people, uh, tuition session tonight for her jellyfish kit. Very, very limited, very limited edition. I should imagine when this video goes out that uh, she'll have sold out, but it's always worth going over there just to see what kit she's got. And she does, it's all things resin. The only thing she doesn't supply, I don't think, is the resin itself, but she has coupon codes for codes for mold resin which we're going to try out this evening as well it's currently five past five and i'm getting very excited because in 55 minutes time we're joining her live can't wait we won't we're not we won't be f filming it because it is a private closed session but we will show you in an upcoming video what we made obviously it's a jellyfish because i've given it away but we'll show you what we made <laughs> there we go so just going round the edges of these arch shaped molds, molds, um, coasters or little centerpieces or bits of interior decor or accessories, um, just to show you what we do, just to take the sharp edge off of things, make sure that, you know, as I said, it's all nice and smooth to use. There we go. You see that little gold bit there, that little flash of gold in the middle there. So that's those done, complete with the little curly whirly still <laughs> bits of resin. But that's the three of them. So this is the final shot, as you can see. Yeah, lots of mica bleeding through into the white resin in this one, which is a shame, but it doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine. So yes, we couldn't find the hydroponic vase part. We didn't have any. I thought we did. But this gives you an idea of what you can do. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for staying with us for nearly 22 minutes long. Hopefully it's given you some inspiration to go and try this for yourself. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, give us a like. Give us the thumbs up button. Share, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that we can keep going and share with you our ideas on our creative journey. Thanks everyone to everyone again and goodbye.